All right, welcome back to Live Wire Film Reviews. This is Ray Gonzalez, and with me is Peter Mann. What's and, up? And it's 2016, New Year. New Year. Start fresh. New movies. We got El Nino, El Nino. Raining, raining down on your parade. Although um, it's pretty sunny today. Yeah, man. I was not expecting this. You know, there was a window leak in my bedroom now. No way. Yeah, I don't know where. Like in the middle of the night, I guess the rain was sm- hitting the window so hard that you like. You know, when it comes down. Uh, it comes down like it sounds like hail. Yeah, it did. It was just oof. so I was just holding on to the us window. Californians. I mean, we sound like a big storm is coming. <laughs> right. And we don't. We don't even know the half of it. People in Seattle are like ha 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 suckers. Like <laughs> you don't even know. So that's what it sounds like in the drill. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we got a. We had a, a bunch of movies at the end of the year that uh, have we been were coming. Spoiled. Yeah. Some like, good, some a little rotten, you yeah. know. Some it, spoiled in other words, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, for the most part, it was good. Star Wars mostly conquered, um, but there was a, a few hidden gems in in most of the film releases that have come out. <laughs> um, so let's go, let's go with the rotten apples. Let's no, 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 no. Let's not go with the rotten apples just yet. That's on the next one. We're gonna go with well. One is a little. Well, you could say. No, one is one's what we call a mediocre filler appetizer, okay. while the other one is is the the surprising uh, the surprising this meal. This is like a surprising sleeper hit. Mm-hmm. So let's go with the first one. The first one is a concussion with Will Smith. He's a uh, back back this year after Focus. Mm-hmm. Which I thought Focus was a nice little change this of pace is, for his career. It's a strong film. I, I I don't agree. I don't really. You weren't really crazy in about on it. The ending, you know, right. like and the and the execution of it. Okay. So, but you, I mean, it was a it's a good thing. It was the signs of good things to come for Will Smith. Yes, yes. And this one, he said, I want to be. You know, he he's just in that mode. I want to be treated seriously as an actor. He's like, I want to be no more hell, nah. You know, I want to be a Academy Award nominated again. You know, like uh-huh. I, I need to get that crown. Oh yeah, I forget. Is that uh, Ali? He was he was nominated for Ali and The Pursuit of Happiness. Oh yeah, that's right. He yeah. was good in that one too. Yeah, that movie was good. But the problem with Will Smith, which in this movie is no different, is that the movies always tend to play on the safe side. When you watch mm. a Will Smith movie, you don't get edgy, really. Right. Even when it comes to romantic comedies like his. You could have if you, if you took the Django part. Right. Right, exactly. And that's what people were expecting. Okay, he's going to really give us something different. And he backed and I, out for You know, and, and I felt like his reason of backing out was almost a cop-out, too. Like, yeah. I thought Will Smith was better than that, you know? Yeah. But that's, you know, yeah, neither that's, here that's or there. Big, that's the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, man. I guess like, so. You, know, <laughs> you don't need Tarantino. You got a safe face. So, <clears throat> he came out with Focus, and that was a nice little swagoo style for him. Um... Yeah. So now here comes Concussion, and Concussion is a movie that was taken taken seriously by the NFL. The NFL did not like this movie. It's about the man. What's the man's name? Let me look up the uh, man. Doctor Bennett Amalu. Bennett Omalu, Yes, and let me see. Doctor Bennett Omalu was a. Uh, he found a certain disease, or he found like something that happens. That you know gives brain concussions to football to players, NFL players, to NFL yeah. players, and it happens more and more to each NFL player. And he's the one that figures it out. But the NFL, like, nah, mm-hmm. we don't like that. We we don't need to spread those rumors. Right. What do they want? The NFL wants you to say you made it all up. I made it up. They're accusing you of fraud. If you retract, you'll be fine. This all goes away. Why, why, are, why are they doing this? They're terrified of you. Bennett Amalu is going to war with a corporation that has 20 million people on a weekly basis craving their product. The same way they crave food. The NFL owns a day of the week. The same day the church used to own. Now it's theirs. They're very big. And that's pretty much the basis of the movie, and it sounds like a Lifetime movie, and that's exactly what it is. That's yeah. When you watch this movie, you feel, 
I could watch this at home at Lifetime. Right. You know, like, it just happens to have... It definitely had a made-for-TV film. Yeah, I, like I was saying very. to you, a very made-for-TV film vibe. It did. Vibe. It, and who's the director? L- let me... It's Peter something. Peter Landisman. 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 And let's see what he did. He's done before. He did... He wrote Kill the Messenger, which is pretty damn good. You saw Kill the Messenger? Mm-hmm. Wow. I didn't see that one. I saw part of Parkland, and I found it... Again, dull and just felt very TV-ish. Yeah, I've never seen that one. Yeah, it felt very TV-ish. Um, but yeah, I mean, it like it. It's definitely a movie that it was a right choice for Will Smith. I can see like why Will Smith chose and and he plays the part very well. Um, mm-hmm. he really digs into the character. You know, he yeah, no. really he really wants people to tell the truth. Yes. It's very important to him that people tell the truth in this right. movie. Yeah. Fold up the National Football League. Want to solve the problem. Who are you? What, did, what, did, you, what are you asking? You're, you're a pathologist. I'm, you, you perform autopsies. You, yes, I'm a mere pathologist. That's it. That's all I am. Do you have any idea the impact of what you're doing? Yes, I do. Do you understand the impact of what you are doing? If just 10% of the mothers in America decide that football is too dangerous for their sons to play, that is it. It is the end of football. Kids, colleges, and eventually, it's just a matter of time, the professional game. Joe, he does autopsies. He's not in the outcome business. He has no business. You know what history does to people. Trained physicians who ignore science. Oh, wow. Sir, I am not done. History laughs. If you continue to deny my work, the world will deny my work. But men, your men, continue to die. Their families left in ruins. Truth. Tell the truth. You sure? You sure? You want to do this? I would ask you that same question, Doctor Maroon. And and he's really the only highlight and i could say also which you can debate with me i don't know if you agree with me uh the relationship he has with uh gugu mbathara like mm-hmm. the woman that soon becomes his his wife mm-hmm. you know those those moments to me are what really like kind of their relationship is a saving grace yeah. to this movie because now while the plot of him trying to prove that these concussions are hurting these football players is you know it's thrilling it's it's really interesting the way it's played out nothing really happens nothing mm-hmm. you know there there's no how do you say it there's no there's no thrill to it there's mm-hmm. no tension there's i think uh the nfl as as much as it found a threat to this film, was heavily involved of doing a lot of PR right. work and a lot of cleaning up as far as it took. I think there was a delay of three years for this film to finally get made. And when oh. it was made, the NFL was able to uh, do some updating as far as policy is concerned and really? safety issues is, are concerned. <laughs> so it's almost like... We are scared of this film, but we cleaned up a little bit. So, oh. like, you know, the, so that's why I think this film kind of like, you think it's like this, like, really, really, like, eye opening, but it's not, you know, display of, of, um, you know, politics in the NFL. But I mean, really, NFL did a pretty good job at, at cleaning up. Cleaning um, up after. As far as yeah. policy is concerned, uh, mm, currently. I did not know about the whole three years and everything mm-hmm. about that. Mm-hmm. I really wow, it, it makes sense. So I mean, maybe that's that's why I also think that this film played it a lot safe. And I agree with you. It it, it it's a movie that could have been very risque, mm-hmm. you know. Come and it's it's a movie that could be very risque in the sense of like, say, the next movie we're gonna review after this, that really right. takes 
interesting turns right. or you know like it's just, just movies like Wolf of Wall Street that you know some things are over exaggerated but you know you kind of believe it blends that, comedy and uh, real, real life real, drama yeah. very and, well and this one it's just this one's like more of your you know generic you know it's about an immigrant fighting it's like a David and Goliath story yeah you know and it's your typical stuff like I said Will Smith does great work I mean it's an amazing story of how like uh, he's Nigerian right yes yes I mean obviously Will Smith is going for the the accent and you know what Will Smith I cannot blame him for it no but it sticks out as a sore thumb was that was playing a Ni- Nigerian and having that accent and not and knowing the on- authenticity behind that accent hmm. um, that kind of hurt him. You think I believe so. so. Yeah. Um, but uh, Will Smith, I, I will have to say that um, the reason why I like this film is because of Will Smith. Yeah. And He's... and basically nothing else. I mean, well, I mean, you could tell I, I me did, Alec like, Baldwin did no, did no, no, okay but or I, I like the, Al, I like Brooks or I liked his wife Gugu Umbatha Ra. Okay, yeah. I mean, but very light like it plays out like a yeah, lifetime movie. It does. It does. And and while I did like Alec Baldwin, mm-hmm. you know, because Alec Baldwin uh played it nicely toned down Yeah. And, you know, took the subtle approach on this. Yeah, one. You, yeah, you know, and he humanizes thing. Uh, the the character quite well. Um, the one character that I also did like was uh David Morse, his little appearance. Oh in yeah, the, as the football player. What's his name? Mike, Mike Webster. Webster. That you know, he's the first one to get injured. Yeah, and or, the, you know what's crazy? Again, I'm not really familiar with with the the the, the story, mm-hmm. but uh, how it happens to Pittsburgh players yeah it's like how convenient yeah like it, like i don't know if this is like all 100 percent facts i i like, doubt it you but know like, like why like, couldn't anybody on the miami dolphins get this right these types of uh, effects <laughs> and nobody nobody else is paying attention to this shit like it just yeah, happens to be pittsburgh that, that's 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 another reason why it just felt so like it didn't really make sense and it felt real tv it's mm-hmm. just so many coincidences like that. Yeah. Uh, but other than I would say I like David Morse. I liked. Uh, I liked Alec. I don't Baldwin. know if that's how David Morse looks now, but <laughs> I, I would say that <laughs> they really made him look kind of down and out. And Trailer I don't know if there was trash. I don't know if there was extra like makeup. Oh, I think so. Okay, most definitely. Because I would feel like really like wow, David Morse really like let himself go. <laughs> you know, no, he dude. looked like really. Like in despair, and I was like, he, "That he's can't like, be David." If Morse. Christian Bale can do it, so could I. <laughs> I was like, I'm the gonna... way they dressed him, I just think. Uh, I mean, uh, obviously, mm-hmm. there was like some makeup and whatnot, but uh, yeah, no, yeah, he was, yeah, he was good too. I, I, I have to. Give Other that than too. than the the top three for me: Google and Bathara, David Morrison, Will Smith. The rest of the cast not so good. I mean, you have like Luke Wilson who's Luke, barely in it and yeah, really does and nothing. Luke, you know, playing the type of characters you expect from Luke Wilson. Yeah, you know, like clean. He's a Mister Cleanup guy. Yeah. Uh, Albert Brooks. I mean, he was a joke. Like, and and he 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 would say these serious. I think lines. that his character could have been stronger, especially because he is like. The only defender I of take him seriously though because he's just like look at what you're doing but i'm gonna back you up on this yeah and i'm like ah, i just think that if like there was cliche, a little bit more um i don't know um to his character mm-hmm. like i like i can I, I i believe like he didn't sell it to us as as not as, at all as much as he could have i believe them as marlon the fish more than i believe <laughs> them in this performance uh, you know but this is your typical uh, safe safe stuff that you know a lot of people will still enjoy. You know, you mm-hmm. you are really into the NFL. You know, I mean, if you're a Will Smith fan and or NFL and you want to know more about these kind of situations, sure, right, definitely check it out. But as an you know, this movie was being pushed for Oscar contender stuff, and I can't even see Will Smith matching up with any of the performances that are in competition. I mean, really, like in all honesty. Is it? Is he even nominated as a for a Golden Globe? For I have. This? I don't know. I was going to ask hey. you that question too. But if seriously, I was just trying to find a certain scene that really stuck out in my mind with Will Smith. And would it be that scene where they had the sit down with that that one doctor? <laughs> Tell the truth. They were exactly. I mean, is it really? <laughs> we already got that from the trailer. So, but like, 
What was about that really the, the only when conviction? I was, when I was a little boy, America was this. Yeah. In heaven was this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That. When I was a boy, growing up in Nigeria, heaven was here. And America was here. I have never wanted anything as much as I wanted to be accepted as an American. But Mike Webster goes mad and nobody asks why. They make fun of him. They insult him on TV and now they want to pretend that his disease does not exist and they want to bury me. I am the wrong person to have discovered this. But those are all in the trailer. It, it, you're, 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 you're like spoon fed this yeah. like Oscar bait. Pretty much. So. Pretty much. Uh, what would you give this film? Um, if you know what, as much as I, I, I commend Will Smith's performance. This, I really don't think that based on, only on his performance that you can get a, a a great review. No. Um, but it's very tame. Like I want to tell you that it was borderline bland. It, like it just sat borderline. there. It just sat there, and you just were given facts, and by the end of it, you get a blurb and. You don't really feel much. End credits, you, you know? You like, walk out. Exactly. Like, you were supposed to get something meaningful out of this, and you really just like, okay. There, There's a character here. I'm sorry to interrupt. There's a character here that uh, he's uh, the guy that plays uh, the, the villain in the Get Rich or Die Trying, who oh, yeah, is yeah, yeah. with the NFL pushing and pushing and pushing against yeah. this guy. And then by the end of the film, he, he has gets, the... He, he, how could be CTE it? is yeah, what and, they call it. And I felt no... I felt nothing. Yeah, you know, and I generally like that actor. Mm-hmm. I actually think that actor could have been a good, because uh, he's actually Nigerian. Yeah, okay, you know, yeah, he could have yeah, been yeah. the doctor, right, you right, know? right? But hey, he's not Will Smith. Will Smith wanted to take his turn. No, um, go ahead. Based solely on Will Smith's performance, I would have to just give this movie a two star rating. That's exactly what I would give it. This is definitely uh, just bland, boring, yeah. safe stuff that a lot of you know, like I really am, will like. I really want to like, you know, like. As a fan of Will Smith, just pat Will Smith on the back and be like, you know what, you did a good job yeah, here, but good job, Tiger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just get it. But it just wasn't, you know, as compelling as a story. He, he's in that age now that he, this is that safe stuff, you know. Like, and while I like the pursuit of happiness, I also thought that was a little on the safe side as mm-hmm. well. And that's what I mean. Like Will Smith's career is a lot of being on the safe side, mm-hmm. you know. And he needs stuff like I really hope. That Suicide Squad mm-hmm. gives him a little edge. Yeah. You know, and I thought Focus was a little different. It's not so much on the safe side from what we expect from Will Smith. Right. It's a little edgier. Yeah. It's like he he's plays a kind of a ruthless con artist. Right. Here's a little taste of that edginess. Yeah. And I was just like, but he's still I want suave and debonair. Right. So now I, I want a dose. I want, I didn't, I'm, I'm happy with that little taste yeah. i want a big dose of edgy right. i just think that with this film and focus we're just getting little bits and pieces of yeah. good things to come from most so you know i like focus better than i did this film at least i yeah, enjoyed it no, me too i enjoyed it and this film like i said like you said you know yeah. it's just other than the the top cast members that we pointed out it's just bland boring yeah. safe side stuff that grandmas will like right <laughs> You know, people. That I think like older Wilson, audiences, yeah, will, will be taken, definitely like, oh, be enthralled. In- this is interesting. Yeah. I knew there was something going on when they yeah. bashed their heads. You know, <laughs> yeah. like, but I would have to give it the same review, man. Okay. Two stars. Uh, We're just on the same wavelength today. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so let let's move on. Sorry, Will. <laughs> well, next time, people, next time, buddy. Big Will, Drew Hill. Um, the next one is a movie that I wasn't, I wasn't prepared to think that this is gonna be. Uh, what it was, man. You know, and a fun fact about this next movie, it was supposed to be released next year. Mm. But the studios were so proud because this movie was filmed this year. Mm-hmm. Like, not that long ago. Right. And and the director released it, gave a, a cut to the studio, and the studio was so proud of this film that they said, we need to drop it this year. And we're talking about Adam McKay's The Big Short. Mm. Which is, uh, it's kind of like a... a, a f- Safer, well, I wouldn't say safer, a softer Wolf of Wall Street, you know. Um, I think um, 
when you say that, um, I want to attribute it to being more than just that. I think mm. I want to say that it more plays on the realistic fact of what went on during the crash yeah, uh, of the stock market. Uh, and, and with Scorsese at the, behind the Wolf of Wall Street, I'm glad he was, but it just is a barrage of over-exaggeration right, of right, the right. shenanigans that went on with these these crooked stockbrokers. This one is a, an intimate look. Somebody once uh, somebody told me that it is a lot like Spotlight mm. because it's not in the point of view of the victims; it's the point of view of the outsiders, like the newspapers with the you know, right, the, right, the right, newspaper right. team with the. These are analysts trying to figure out what's going to happen and when what exactly is going on what you with know, our trying, the, with the economy and exactly how quote unquote the 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 housing market mm-hmm. is doing such a good job and when you look and crunch the numbers and again I think the I mean we're going to get into it and I'm going to tell you how much I enjoyed the film but the only thing that I think that I could tell you right now that I had a problem with was just like too much um um stock market jargon stock that, market jargon you know like that got like Sometimes rammed down confused. our yeah exactly you rammed down our throats and yeah. i was just like you know a, a little less of this and a little bit more wolf of wall street right think, right a little you know. bit more um there is definitely a lot more heart in this film but let's go with the story it, it all starts with uh who does christian bale play michael burry michael burry uh finds out the situation with the stock market and how it's going to crash mm-hmm. and banks are going to foreclose and all this and Wall Street is just going to burn down in a few years and they need to bet against the bet the against housing the market and the housing market mm-hmm. and whatnot and people just pass him to the side. He actually does it without any, you know, any backing by anybody. He's been in there for seven hours. I already had a breakdown. He's letting the fun tank. No, he actually prefers that you email him. Excuse me. Mr. Fields, Mr. Hi, Lawrence. We have no confidence in your ability to identify macroeconomic trends. You flew here to tell me that? Why? Every, a, a, anyone can see that there's a real estate bubble. Actually, no one can see a bubble. That's what makes it a bubble. That's dumb, Lawrence. It's always markers. Mortgage fraud quintupled since 2000, and the average take-home pay is flat, but home prices are soaring. That means the homes are debt, not assets. So Mike Burry, a guy who gets his hair cut at Supercuts and doesn't wear shoes, knows more than Alan Greenspan and Hank Paulson. Yeah, Dr. Mike Burry, yes, he does. Um, in then, fact, his boss is like strongly like give me back suggesting <laughs> that he does not do this. Right. Um, then, it, from some way or another, it leads to Ryan Gosling, who yeah. is kind of like the Jordan Belfort. Of yeah, he's character. he's the trade. He's the stock market trader, and he's that the has narrator. some some insight of what's what the shit that's going to go down. Mm-hmm. And he's the one that takes it to Steve Carell and his crew, and he's a uh, Mark Baum. Mm-hmm. Who's actually based off a of real person, Steven Eisenman. He's a hedge fund manager of some sort. Hi, how are you? Hey, Mr. Bennett. What do we have? Let's see what you got. You smell that? What is that? What? What's that smell? The cologne? No. Opportunity. No, money. I smell money. Okay. Chris? Damn it. I'm sorry. This is your basic mortgage bond. All right? The originals were simple. They were just thousands of AAA mortgages bundled together, guaranteed by the U.S. government. The modern ones are different. They're private, and they're made up of layers of tranches. highest level triple A's getting paid first the lowest rated B's getting paid last taking on defaults first now obviously if you're buying B's you can make more money but they're a little risky sometimes they fail Chris somewhere along the line these B's and double B's went from a little risky to dog shit where's the trash I'm talking rock bottom FICO scores 
no income verification. Adjustable rates, dog shit. The default rates are already up from 1% to 4%, fellas. And if they rise to 8%, and they will, a lot of these triple Bs are going to zero, too. And that, you're too close, is an opportunity. Okay, you're saying that at 8%, the bonds fail, and we are already at 4%? That's right. If they go to 8 it's Armageddon. Yeah, that's right. How come nobody's talking about this? You're completely sure of the math. Look at him. That's my quant. Your what? My quantitative. My math specialist. Look at him. You notice anything different about him? Look at his face. That's very racist. Look at his eyes. I'll give you a hint. His name's Yang. He won a national math competition in China. He doesn't even speak English. Yeah, I'm sure of the math. Actually, my name's Jung, and I do speak English. Jared likes to say I don't because he thinks it makes me seem more authentic. And I got second in that national math competition. So you're offering us a chance to short this pile of blocks? How? With something called a credit default swap. It's like insurance on the bond, and if it goes bust, you can make 10 to 1, even 20 to 1 return and it's already slowly going bust. 10 to 1, 20 to 1, no way. And no one's paying attention. No one is paying attention because the banks are too busy getting paid obscene fees to sell these bonds. But wait, you are the bank. I mean, you work for the bank. I bet your margins are pretty nice and fat. Let's not talk about my margins, by the way. Being nice and fat, that's a nice shirt. Do they make it for men? Aren't you the bank? I work for the bank. I don't think like a bank. Big bank, small bank, I like to make money, all right? Let me put it this way. I'm standing in front of a burning house, and I'm offering you fire insurance on it. A's, zero. B's, zero. Double B's, zero. Triple B's, zero. And then that happens. What is that? That's America's housing market. And him and his crew try to find out if it's true or not, and they, they get their facts and they join in on the action. Right. And in another sit in another part of town, um, there's these two young guys. Who were the guys? Uh, Charlie Geller, played by John Magaro, and mm-hmm. Jamie Shipley, played by Finn Whitrock. Who are these young uh, these young cats that are trying to put their stamp on the on the Wall on Street the, on the market on the market. Yeah. And nobody I guess gives young, them it's, uh, inspiring, you know, yeah. traders who are who are mentored in a way or another by their next door neighbor, played by Brad Pitt, who's a uh, Ben Rickard or basically right, right. yeah, that's right, Ben Hockett, and he is the one that they get a hold of like uh, Christian Bale's information and Michael Burry's information, and they join in with uh, Brad Pitt's guidance. He's he's a retired stockbroker. Who's now like against that whole world? Wall Street. It's like it broke him and he doesn't want to be a part of it. Yeah. He has so many numbers and I always forget which one he prefers he because he's very specific. I don't know if it's the first one. Just try it. Okay. I, okay. Ben Rickard. Hey, Ben, it's Jamie. Jamie, you know you're not supposed to use this line. Told you. Um, okay, let's try number two out of 14. Ben Rickard. Ben, why do you do that, man? I mean, you're a retired trader, okay? No one is listening so to your calls. The NSA has $52 billion budget and the ability to monitor... To tens of million calls a second. You think they're not using it? I promise I will refrain from saying Ben Rickert and Dirty Bomb in the same... Thing. You know, and it's a lot going on already just in the plot. Mm-hmm. You know, and everybody knows how this film ends. You yeah. know, with the stock market crash and right. and a lot of people, you know, their lives changing. And this is like this is a very and I meant by the Wolf of Wall Street comment because it's a very fun. It's very upbeat in a lot of senses, but it doesn't ever shy away on the seriousness of what's going on yeah. and the reality you're of the ca- situation. In, in the Wolf of Wall Street, I get what you're saying, where you're kind of a part of the the band of brothers mm-hmm. of these these the bad boys, the, of these crooked yeah. um, stock bro- uh, stockbrokers. Uh, and this one is just kind of like the people behind the scenes of 
of of of those of finding out what these stock bro- brokers are doing mm-hmm. and how they're hurting the the market and how the economy will you know like they said everything that you know you know goes goes up must come down right and it comes all the way down and we Sadly. weren't prepared for it and and it's an <clears throat> upbeat movie um you get a lot of heart and you get a lot of heart from the characters such as a uh, Christian Bale, Steve Carell and Brad Pitt. Mm-hmm. You know, though they are the ones that give you like the emotional yeah. uh guilt that they feel throughout the film about what they're doing. Right. They understand what they're doing. They'd be stupid if they didn't do it. Right. But they understand the consequences of what they're doing. Right. You know, and it's, it's I think a, I think with Ryan Gosling's character that you put it best that he's the Jordan Belfort and he's the one where he's like he sees things further like he understands what's gonna happen yeah. he just doesn't give a fuck because right. that's the nature of the business he's an right. animal right the other ones are in the positions that they're in because they're not animals right they're they're, they're know, thinking of outside the box of what how this is gonna hurt the Ameri- world American right. lives yeah. you know? yes yes Jared it's chaos Here's down here where are we and seas are wet for there were no more worlds to conquer Shane? Shane? Well, nobody's buying CD or mortgage bonds anymore, and everybody wants swaps. Swaps are now the most popular product on the street. That's good for us. Yes and no. I heard from somebody who heard from somebody. No, Alex. No. Sorry. Benny Klieger over at Morgan is taking out some heavy losses in the bond department. It might be time to get our life jacket and get out. I mean, seriously, I feel like I'm financially inside of you or something. Okay. I'm jacked. I'm jacked to the test. Good. Do you feel it? No. And it's uh, it 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 all sounds very complicated in the way we're talking about it and stuff. Yeah. But Adam McKay, who comes from comedy, he right. comes from uh, Anchorman, Anchorman Talladega Nights, nice, you know, other guys, Jinx, Buy Me a Coke, you know, <laughs> Step Brothers, Step Brothers. Um, yeah, no. He he definitely knows how to make it interesting. What it's surprising that this is his project, writer director. I think so you know? too. I and, think it is very surprising that and, he is at the helm of it, and he handles it, you know, like a like a master. Mm-hmm. He is very on his game in this, and this is the best thing he's definitely ever done. Yes, you know, after doing classic comedy films like Anchorman. You know he's he's ready think, to step in the next phase in his career. I really think investing in a story like this, which is based on a true story, and it happened fairly recently. Yeah. Um, and it's still affecting us. Oh yeah. Um, I just think him wanting to do other things than your regular Will Ferrell, um, you know, right? Dumb comedies. Uh, just a little bit something with more meat on it, and this uh, this ensemble cast that is just great. I mean, everybody brings something different to the table. Christian Bale, Steve Carell, Ryan Gosling, Brad Pitt, even Brad Pitt when, which I think took a back seat, where he's only in three scenes, but like you say, they're very pivotal. Yeah, I just think that he was more of a name. Well, yeah, that's that's exactly what we were talking about this. Um, this is on uh, Plan B Productions which is his production company. Mm-hmm. And I believe that studios granted him them to make this movie with the help of Brad Pitt being also starring in the film mm-hmm. as a, you know, like a financial security. Mm-hmm. You know, and kind of like 12 Years a Slave, you know, they put him on the on the poster and everything and it was a Plan B Productions movie, but he's barely in the film. Right. You know, and I think you're one scene now. Right. Yeah. Two two maybe. You know, yeah. and this is no different. This is you know, he, like I said, I, his scenes, some of the scenes that he has are my favorite scenes. Um, but to me, the the heart and soul goes out to Steve Carell and Christian Bale. Mm-hmm. You know, Christian Bale's definitely going to get Oscar nominated for this. Um, and his scenes, you know, like, they're all in his office. Yeah. They're all in his office. But he brings such and a, a depth. And a t-shirt. With, and, you know, and, and shorts. And, and no shoes. Right. You know, like, and... He brings a lot of depth to his character. Now, from the minute he's, you, you think that this is going to be his a character, he have, has a glass eye, and right. like I just think that Christian Bale just really goes for it. Like, oh, it, my character has a glass eye for real. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run with it. <laughs> he, he, this guy can do no wrong, honestly, yeah. from what I've seen recently, and um, he, he doesn't fail here. If he doesn't get Best Supporting Actor nomination, which I'm sure he will, 
you know, um, it's it's a well deserved nomination. Yeah. Uh, the question is whether Steve Carell is gonna get nominated for Best Actor. He was so good in this. He film. was in in very different than what Foxcatcher brought us from mm-hmm. Steve Carell. Yeah. Uh, you'd think that he wouldn't be able to pull this off because people see him already. You know, like Steve Carell from The Office. Is he gonna I pull think, another Office? On I think us? the thing is, is that once you see Steve Carell, you already automatically are laughing. He hasn't even said anything. Mm-hmm. I think I got that reaction watching this film. Right. When well, you once... first see him, everybody's just laughing because this is this guy that. I think his first scene, he's interrupting some meeting, some, some AA, AA meeting. meeting. Yes. And he comes off as a douchebag at first, but you see that he has a lot of pain yeah. from his uh, from his. Uh, past. I didn't even mention Marissa Tomei as his wife too. Oh man, because she's only in there for one scene. They're, yeah, like. <laughs> but yeah. I don't know. I I really think that uh, she kind of shapes him and, and and who we we see perceive him as, mm-hmm. whereas this guy that's like very um, business oriented, yeah. but has the mindset of of er, your your average joe you know like right. he cares but he's rich you know like True. he's taken care of and by the end when they make a decision like is it really weighing heavily so heavily on him or is it just like well we had a shitty day at the uh, at the office you know what that's i mean true that's true yeah. So, yeah and this is the dynamic uh very dynamite type of editing uh the i like pacing. the fact that we get like cameo yeah, from, cameos from like say Selena Gomez. She's really trying to explain to us what this type of shit is about. Like, I know. Come like, on. <laughs> I think she really had to like read, like reread <laughs> and redo her lines. And, like, what was that word again? Like, what does that mean? Can you use it in a sentence? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, or Margot Mar- Robbie in yeah. the in the tub. Yeah, man. It, it's very it's very interesting. You know, there is a lot of jargon, but they do their best to try to like simplify it for you and explain it to yeah, you. Yeah, I like the fact yeah. where she's like Margot Robbie's character is like explaining I forget what she's explaining. I don't know, like flow charts or something. Right. And uh she's like, Well, you get it? And it's like, I'm Margot Robbie, fuck off or something. Like that. Yeah, that's <laughs> how she signs signs off. Or, or like certain that. characters break down the fourth wall, mm-hmm. you know, and they start talking to the audience. Oh, you yeah, know? Gosling does that a lot. Gosling is mostly the one who does it, but yeah. there's a couple of characters here and there that do it as well. You know, it's a it's a very animated film. Yeah, you know, there's a lot a, going a, on. A lot, and it's a very alive, but it, it tells the true story with a lot of heart, you know, like... And, and it's it's almost a dark comedy. Yes. And by the end of it, you really feel devastated. Yeah. By the end, you're not laughing. Because this shit happened. Yeah. By the this end, you're happened. definitely not laughing. A lot of people's homes taken away from them. So, I mean, just almost overnight. And you're, I know you're, you're shit of luck. So, what would you give this film? Um, I think initially, I think initially, I was gonna go with a four point five only because. Uh, like I said, with the whole jargon involved, mm-hmm. it you it really gets muddled a lot, and I'm kind of like a little less of that and more of, you know, this really like upbeat, like fast pace, like right, because there's a lot going on and it's there like a lot to on. like cover and whatnot. Um, but it's like like I said, it's like really f- you know upbeat, fast, fast paced. Yeah. Um, a very solid four point five. I'm teetering to a five Ooh. but i'm gonna go ahead and stick with my guns and i'm gonna give it a 4.5 4.5 um i'm gonna give it a five man oh nice <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna give it a five this nice. is a movie that when i came out of the movie i was just like you know what this one was really good yeah you know then the more i thought about it i was just like no this movie was not just good this yeah. movie was great yeah you know and and like days go by and i go you know what i i think this is one of my favorite films of the year like you know and and I had to watch it again. And I okay, you know it. what? You you no, already... no, you already made your decision. Like... <laughs> <laughs> again, I was teetering. Uh, okay, four point five. Uh, no, you're. <laughs> but the, from the performances, and I really walked away with a lot of great performances, mm. uh, and that stuck with me. Yeah. From you know, and what's impressive of all is from the guy that made Anchorman. Yeah. Who who really brought this home? I thought. On paper, this sounds. What are they gonna do? Like an anchor man, but with the stock market, like. Right. And they brought such a human story with human characters and and a top notch supporting cast backing the main players. And the editing is, you know, it's just cutthroat and it it just everything is so alive and dynamic. Mm-hmm. It, you know, 
you'd be hard pressed to find a movie uh, like this that tells a story like this, but that you walk away. Um, somebody told me that it's a lot like Spotlight, and I do agree with them. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a uh, it is, and it walks. And when you finish the film, you walk out uh, feeling some type of way. You know, mm-hmm. it really hits you, like mm-hmm. the, the the consequences, of the choices they made, and not just from them, but like from you know the banks and yeah. and everything. Um, yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite films of the of last year. Um, I second that. Oh yeah, so I'm gonna give it a five. Nice. You know, I really am interested to see what Adam McKay's gonna do next. Yeah. You know, any last words? Bye bye. Banks have conditioned us to trust them. What have we got from that? Twenty five percent interest rates on credit cards. They have screwed us on student loans that we can never get out from under. When the banks committed the greatest fraud in U.S. history. No one is paying attention. It's unbelievable. Or outsiders risked it all to take them down. We are going to make the big banks hurt. 